without further ado, we have a very special guest, a very, very interesting guest in my opinion. I hope you guys feel the same. Jesse the Machine Green, world-renowned chainsaw artist, motivational speaker, and doctor, if you ask UMass Dartmouth. So, Jesse, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Hofstra. <laughs> I'm good. How are you guys? We're great. Thanks for asking. We're ready to get in with this interview. We got a lot of questions for you, so I hope awesome. you'll be willing to answer. Yeah, man. All right. We're going to kick it off real simple, Jesse. For those who may not be familiar with you, could you offer some quick background as to who you are and, uh, and what, what, you, what you get into in your time? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. How fast can I sum this? So I'm a master chainsaw sculptor. Uh, I had a show on the National Geographic Channel called American Chainsaw. I was uh, sponsored by Husqvarna for years. I've done um, every major press outlet in America, I think. Um, I was on everything from the soup to uh, I, I was in the New York Times. I was uh, on all kinds of good stuff. I'm a motivational speaker these days. I, I, uh, I have a forthcoming book series coming out called Chainsaw Cheeseburgers and Rock and Roll, which is also the title of the motivational series. It's actually focused on kids. So I go to schools, grades 2 to 12, and I do this 40-minute, fast-paced, uh, multimedia motivational show. And that's pretty much my new love and focus. How's that for a fast bio? I think it's a wonderful bio. And just to get into it a little more, when you first started pursuing your art, did you think that your art would take you the route that it did in terms of motivational speaking? Was this always the original plan, or what really inspired you to get into it? You know, it's funny. I was just telling my daughter, who is uh, in middle school, how public speaking was the only class, I think, in high school that I liked. Um, and uh, I always, I was a cartoonist for the first 21 years of life, and that's all I wanted to do. And then, and this was in, I hit college in the uh, early 90s, and computers were starting to become a thing, and I was, started, I was jealous of the people who could do computer drawing, because I couldn't do it. And I didn't really, I started to not see my future in cartooning and illustration, so I, shift, I changed my major to sculpture. Picked up a chainsaw. It was one of the first cut, um, and that became my path. And that was my path for uh, the better part of the last, was it 25 years or something like that? And then uh, 10 years ago, I started to dive into the public speaking, and you know, immediately I was like, okay, this is ultimately the direction that I definitely want to go in. And uh, I've been doing that. So you know, you break into that that public speaking that public speaking scene, and you, you start these events, and you know, little by little. What was that main message that you tried to convey, in your, whether it be in your shows now or when you, when you first started? So my story is so unconventional, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, you, you really never heard a story quite like it. And so and the, mo the, the, the end of the story is I got to live all my dreams and then some. And that's what I try to encourage everybody to do. I, I want to get to kids, I want to get to people early in their lives so that they understand that, hey, listen, you've got more choices than just the, the normal that you're hearing, you know, the standard. I mean, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and it was, you know, just like before. It was you're a lawyer, a doctor, or something like that. The standard choices. And uh, especially in today's world, we didn't have the Internet then. It's astounding the information that's at your fingertips now. And if you didn't already know that there's so many other options out there in life that you can, you can just do, you can follow your passion, you can do what you love. And that's really the only good way to contribute to the world is by giving the world what only you can give the world. So I try to get to people early to let them know that, hey, listen, you've got choices in life, and uh, you should follow the path that you want to and not get stuck doing something you don't, and that's kind of the message. And in getting into your, the message and kind of maybe more of your process, um, how do you draw the connection between your message and your art, or how does your art kind of reflect the messages that you try to share with others? So the whole show is this uh, really fast-paced slideshow. And um, I go through, I'll show a bunch of the genesis of my chainsaw sculptures and how it, how it went from the little seedling to um, doing stuff for ESPN, WWE, et cetera. And uh, throughout, I've got sculptures that will help illustrate the story. And it also goes to show just, you know, it, it, it's one art form, but there's so many art forms. And any art form you want to follow is a good art form. And so it all kind of ties in that way, and it, it helps to illustrate the story as I go. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And just to, to build off of that, you know, 
with with the thing that you do and the fact that you focus really on on, uh, on kids and, and conveying that message to them, what do you believe is the most important part of what you do? Is it the message or is it the audience that you're trying to reach? It's definitely the message. And the thing that's made me fall more and more in love with it every single time I go out is that it this show has been proven over and over and again to reach – it's to, to grab and hold even the hardest to reach. I'm talking kids who – you know, are already in a special school uh, or a special section of a, of, of a school because they just can't concentrate. You know, th- that's how I was. I, I, I was just somebody who wasn't interested in the conventional stuff. And so what this does is it, it, it hones in on that little piece of your brain that says, I think there's more that I could do. I just don't have somebody yet telling me in a way that I can really get that I could do it. And somehow, through the magic of, well, lots of trial and error, definitely, um, and lots of practice. It's 10 years now and over 25,000 students, I'm proud to say. It just hones right in on that little piece of your brain that says, yes, I can do something more. And and I want to, and I do have the right to try, and I'm going to try. And your career, from what I've been able to discuss with you, has very long and very storied. But I kind of want to get into one maybe most unique piece. What is the most unique piece from your memory that you've ever been commissioned to make? Uh, dude, that's such a hard question um, because they're all so different and challenging in their own ways. When I get asked this question at school, um, when I do Q&A with kids, I, 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 t- I tend to give different answers every time. So for you guys, I would say the most unique one that I've done Probably because I, I want to pull one out. Not because it was a it wasn't a, a, a tree or a log that I shaped. This is actually something that I built and carved at the same time. I did this big international Jewish peace symbol sculpture. Uh, it was the word shalom. It was, it was actually designed by a guy named Joel Levitch, and it was shipped out to this huge JCC in out in Kansas and um, and installed there. And it was a really cool piece. I built it at a at a six by six post, you know, railroad tie looking things and. And it was huge, and it was 3,000 pounds, and sipping it you know, halfway across the country was, uh, I held my breath for days. But that was really unique in that way. It was really challenging, and I'm really proud of the, the message that I've sent because it was, it was kind of like the, the, the um, uh, Robert Indiana love sculptures, but with the, the Jewish letters for Shalom. It was pretty cool. It sounds like quite the, quite the story to tell to Tuck and the kids, especially, uh, you know, it's definitely something, like you said, to hold your breath about. But... You've been asked to create so many things and, you know, so much has been asked of you. If you had the chance to pick somebody that you would love to, to make something for or to work with, who, who would that be for you? Sculpture-wise? Yeah. I don't know because I've, I've really got, I've got to do it all. I mean, I, I, especially after I got to work with WWE, that for me was, that was so ticklish. I, I couldn't believe I got to do that. And it's kind of that's part of my motivation for moving on to, to public speaking and focusing on on that. So I'm going to take your question and flip it if you don't mind, and say that if I could do anything, it would be to do um, Chainsaw Cheeseburgers and Rock and Roll on the biggest, most grandest scale possible, and reach the most amount of students, like the biggest indoor space imaginable, and have it on a big screen so everyone can see. Maybe an arena, you know, and have. A, uh, a million kids, I mean, I know that's, not, that's a ridiculous number, but a million kids in there at once, and that would be my dream project. I think that's a wonderful dream project. I really am inspired by your work, and I feel like your main goal is to inspire your audience through your work. But to get into a more maybe of a personal question, has there ever been a person in your audience or maybe your life that has inspired you in one way or another? Oh, Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, my daughter inspires me every day. My wife inspires me. My parents inspire me. Um, And there has been, um, you know, doing these shows can be kind of like stand-up comedy. You you know, you never know what the room's going to be like. Sometimes you get, oftentimes I'll walk in and uh, and the principal will say, you got to watch out for these eighth graders. I don't know. You know, and they end up being the best group of all. Um, And sometimes you get people who are, you know, sometimes you get a group of kids when I do Q&A they'll ask a few questions and then, you know, they're kind of, they're looking around at their peers and they're kind of afraid to ask questions. Other ones will jump up and do things. I had a kid uh, Friday, this past Friday, I did a show for a middle school I go to every year, an eighth grader. Um, he was cerebral palsy and a bunch of other issues that I, I found out later from his mom. He, at the end of the show, raised his hand and said, can I sing a song? And I said, come on up. 
And this kid got up. It was the bravest, most gutsiest thing I've ever seen at one of my shows. He took the microphone, and it was tough for him, but he started singing Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. <laughs> and I, I'm in a band. I, I, you know, I picked up, my wife said to me, I, you know, I'm, I'm surprised you knew what he was doing. I started, uh, cause it, when he got to the chorus, I started doing the bump, bump, bump for him, and that you know, and prompted him to keep going. And what initially started off as his peers kind of being like, you know, a little bit of chuckles because what's going on, once he got to that chorus, the place erupted. Uh, and, and then they screamed and cheered for him, and then he got to the, he got to the bridge, and, and, you know, and everybody was just going nuts. And, it was so insp- and then I found out later what his story was. And um, it's so inspiring. It's amazing. The, the show prompted him to act like that, and that's exactly what I try to do. It sounds like in an incredible experience, not only for for him but for you as well. You know, to to be a part of that that turning point and that uh, that that breakthrough, uh, coming out of your shell and really you know reaching those, like you said, reaching those that are hardest to reach and hardest to to keep that attention. And I'm sure that there's no you know no shortage of people that want to be involved and, and get get a feel for that. So, how can people learn more about you and and your work and maybe get in touch to to have you host cheeseburg, uh, you know, chainsaws, cheeseburgers, and rock and roll for them. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. It is a tongue twister. Chainsaws, cheeseburgers, and rock and roll dot com. Chainsaws, cheeseburgers, and rock and roll dot com. I also have the machine just green dot com, which is my sculptures, and one could occupy themselves for hours on either one, but. Um, so it's Chainsaw's Cheeseburgers and Rock and Roll dot com. You can also get there through the machine Jesse Green dot com. Thanks for asking. Thank you for th- thank you for being here and answering all of our questions that we have. But that looks like that it's all we have for you today, Jesse. Thank you once again. Thank you so much for for joining us here today and, and giving us your time. Can I leave you guys with one quick message? Absolutely. Obviously, you're all in radio for a reason. So stick with what you love. Go for it. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. it goes, the, the appreciation goes both ways, you guys. Have a great morning. You as well, Jesse. We'll catch you soon. All right. Right on.